Hello everyone, in today's video I'll review the first Descendant, the new free to play looter shooter developed and published by Nexon. The game is made with Unreal Engine 5 and features solo and co-op gameplay. The game sits on mixed reviews on Steam as of Saturday and the most negative reviews talk about the monetization, performance issues and the repetitive or greedy nature of the game. I love looter shooters, from Borderlands to Outriders and Warframe. I don't really like Destiny for a number of reasons and I won't get into that. I'll only say this, the first descendant is free unlike Destiny 2, so <laughs> yeah. In this review I'll talk and show you the game loop with all its systems I discovered in my 25 or so hours playing it, the world, graphics, performance, sound, story and I'll finish as I usually do with the conclusion. So buckle up, because I think this will take a while. The game loop of the first Descendant is pretty straightforward, especially with the story missions holding your hand through each area you go with missions that unlock the next area after you complete the one you are currently in. So you go through all these areas in Albion, that's the stronghold of humanity, and you progress to this as I said by doing missions. The next area is always going to have higher level mobs and rewards. So in this game there is no stupid level scaling to help little Timmy when he plays with his big brother. The missions give all sorts of rewards and it feels like a lottery all the time because some of the rewards have abysmal drop chances. You can boost their chances somehow but I got no idea but I didn't care that much to be honest. TLDR is the game does a pretty decent job rewarding you with stuff and every other mission you can get an upgrade as you level up. And I suspect this goes all the way because in this game you progress by doing harder missions and bosses and those reward you higher level gear obviously. So you can do harder missions and bosses <laughs> to get better gear and so on. The thing that annoys me greatly is the stupid amount of crafting materials that are called consumables in this game. I got, I don't know, close to 70 or something uh, right now, but my bags can hold 280. Jesus fucking Christ, guys. This is at Mastery rank 9. At 30, you get 600 slots. Come on, man. What is this? Well, if you're not familiar with Korean games, they are grindy. And you! Don't nod your head in agreement like that! Alpha. Now. And sexy. Luna's focusing on sensing the beat generated from the Iron Heart. And she's also listening out for the unique noises generated. All characters in this, as in any other Korean game, are hot. The other day my wife told me she is feeling insecure because she saw me playing this. Every time she walked into the room I was talking to a different sexy girl. She concluded by telling me this is not cool. But I didn't care and continued playing. Where was I? Oh, the game loop. Well, to sum it up fast, you, you go talk with someone in Albion to take a mission. Then go into an area that consists of multiple zones. You do missions in each zone and fight a mini boss at the end for better rewards. All these missions are repeatable by the way, so you can stop and farm a specific mission if you want something. Then every 10 or 12 levels looks like devs couldn't make up their mind about this, you are sent to avoid intercept a boss. Some of those pricks are hard, but it depends on your team. Doing a level 54 boss with 3 low level guys is no fun, I tell you. These fights are hard if that's the case and yeah, your time will expire, <laughs> what can you do? So this is pretty much it, between missions you upgrade the gear, craft and research gear and modules, your descendants and weapons can be further customized with modules, every one of those having a module capacity that can be increased by leveling of course. Or you can use a certain item, that's a pain in the ass to make and takes one day and six hours to research, for a big boost in the max capacity of your item, allowing you to fit better modules. Well, this is pretty much like in Warframe if you didn't get it by this point. I start hating these games that make me click mindlessly because I unlock shit all the time. I'm referring to the journal for example, thousands of rewards to click through, oh joy. No idea why they are not placed straight into my library, I mean I got a vague idea. It is like this so you spend more time in the game obviously. Lost Ark killed my enjoyment of the game with all that shit. Mokoko seeds come to mind. The combat in this game is pretty cool, not gonna lie, but there's a big but. 
there's a big but here. I only played with Bunny and Viesa. And from that thing alone, I can tell you those two don't compare. Bunny is cool because of the speed you traverse the world while Viesa is slow. And I'm pretty sure other characters are even slower. So yeah, keep that in mind. Each descendant has active skills and a passive skill that dictates some, sometimes what gear you want. You can have builds in this game by the way. The gameplay feels great, it's fluid and pretty fast. And the skills look cool and feel great. The parkour adds to the combat quite a bit, but not to the extent of Warframe, of course. The combat in this game feels a bit slower and less dynamic. And keep in mind, and I played the fastest descendant in the game. Bunny. There are 14 descendants, I believe, in the game, and some of them have ultimate versions for you to grind or buy with real money. Each descendant has unique abilities and their own set of stats, these stats can be increased and or decreased by slotting the descendant with modules. Kind of job. Wouldn't it be easier if I just froze everything? <laughs> when you start the game, you can choose between Viesa, Lepic and Ajax. Because I'm not a savage like Asmongold, I choose Viesa, of course, because she's hot and I want to make my wife jealous. Always pick female characters in any Korean games. You are welcome. After like two hours of playing, you can get Bunny. Now. I'm fine. I'm fully recovered. I'd like to be assigned to a different operation. Bunny, this is an order. Ugh. It won't be easy to find. So don't spend money on that. Please. In a typical fashion, you have 10 descendants slots while there are 14 in the game. For now. You do the math. One slot is cheap though, only 50 caliber. That's the premium currency in the game, of course. More on that on the monetization section. I don't want to enter in more details, but there is fun to be had with these guys and girls. In the late game, you can even change them depending on the situation, as all the bosses are having weaknesses to some element as far as I saw. One last thing here, Bunny might be great and all, but on most bosses, she's not that great. And I suppose it will get worse on hard bosses where you want that extra edge. The missions are pretty straightforward and I'm not even going to list the types of missions because they are pretty easy. I'll mention it once more, if you want to get a certain item, you can repeat the mission as much as you want. Just do them at least once and you should be fine. Weapons in this game feel good to use. Sniper rifles, machine guns, scout rifles, beam rifles, assault rifles, machine guns, tactical guns, hand cannons, launchers and perhaps I even missed a few. Each weapon type is placed into one of the four categories. General rounds, special rounds, impact rounds and high power rounds. Each one of those categories are having their own set of modules. A submachine gun, for example, use general rounds modules. So you spend more time farming shit. That's the only reason, basically. So basically you need to farm four uh, sets of modules to have for uh, each category. Increasing your weapon proficiency with various guns will grant mastery rank, which is needed to unlock additional module slots and capacity. Additionally, you have the ability to install crystallization catalysts on any weapon at, at weapon proficiency 40. This is effectively a prestige system allowing you to install a new module symbol onto a, onto a gun at the cost of resetting its weapon proficiency. If you played Warframe, you will be pretty familiar with this. From the ones I used, I like some machine guns and assault rifles the most. Tactical rifle feel a bit bad if used on anything other than big boys. Trash mobs makes you hate that gun. But it's too early to talk more about guns to be honest, because I don't have weapons and modules maxed out. And I don't have many of the unique weapons. As you level up, just pick up the ones with the biggest DPS and you should be fine. Missions are very easy, most of them are. There are a few missions that introduce you to certain mechanics of the game and I'll give you an example. Magister Hidden Assets, for example. It, it requires you to decrypt any encrypted vault two times. How the hell do you do that, you may ask? To be able to do that mission, you require code analyzers. No idea about the drop rate but I got one after I did an easy fast mission five times or so. Now that you got your analyzer, you need to find the then vault. Well, take Bunny out and run around the map spamming tap. This is what I did.
that key scans your area and you need to hear a beep. Then it's just a matter of figuring out how to get to the beep. <laughs> if you have a mountain in front of you and still can hear it, it means it's in a cave somewhere. So you need to look for an entrance. Once found, there is this easy mini game to unlock it. No idea what happens if you fail, but I suspect you lose the analyzer. And that's it with this one. Do it once more and you're done. The thing with this is you kind of need to do them if you want to be free to play. And be prepared to do hundreds of them because <laughs> certain research materials are locked behind them and you'll need a lot of materials. Yeah, so for one descendant you'll need like 40 of those keys. For an energy activator you'll need 10 or so. And there are a lot of crafts that require these types of materials. So get used with these vaults. The devs copied Warframe but <laughs> cranked the grind to new levels basically for you to enjoy. So yeah, enjoy it. Usually right before you are done with the zone, the last mission is a boss. I advise you to do that in a group for convenience as you need to DPS to be able to finish it in time. Sometimes it fails and that mission takes a while so you can, it can be annoying but hey, I don't really like that bullet sponginess of those guys as I'd rather have them doing more interesting, I don't know, telegraphed abilities. Most of them are using the same ones with little variation. At the end of these missions you get a chance to obtain descendant or weapon parts, anamorphous material patterns that are used to have a chance at better loot during void intercept battles and of course regular gear. Void intercept battles are the last thing I want to cover in the gameplay section. After you complete the biome, you usually unlock one of these big bullet magnets. I have limited experience as I only did 6 of them on normal difficulty and I suspect on hard they will kick my ass. But I see some patterns already. They are mostly cool, each one has vulnerabilities. Some are weak to fire, some to lighting and so on. This is why you are required to have many descendants in this game. Having only bunny is not going to help most of you on the long term. The TLDR of these guys is you shot the weak spot on their body, evade their high damage skills and do some particular mechanics on each boss. I recommend using shape stabilizers to maximize your loot you gain during these encounters but that's pretty much it. There is some variety with these guys and they are a challenge for sure even in normal. It is group dependent though so don't rage when your group fails. Just do it once more and I'm sure you'll succeed. Graphics now. The biomes in this game are beautiful for the most part. I haven't seen them all by the way. I still need to go through the last one. But as far as I see, each one of them comes with a theme. Kingston is this mix of classical ruined, ruined architecture with vegetation growing on the walls combined with uh, sci-fi features. And that's a very cool combo. Sterile land <laughs> is this cool looking canyon in the desert with a nice and tall rock faces surrounding you. Again, the metallic man-made structures that are populating this biome combines nicely with the environment. Eco Swamp, well, as the name says, it's a swamp. A bit too rocky to be a swamp for my taste, but it's fine, I guess, nothing special. Vespers is a cool zone, I like the pine forest and castle ruins that are all over the place. It was a good change of scenery after all the deserts I've been through. Agna Desert looks cool. It's a warmer looking version of sterile land, really nothing special, but I enjoyed it more. White Knight Gulch has a Nordic feel to it. Cool looking mountains all around devoid of vegetation. I love the caves in this area and has plenty of rivers and waterfalls. Just beautiful scenery. Hagios or however you pronounce that is a desaturated sterile land I was very disappointed by this area, especially after I enjoyed White Knight Gulch so much. Same rocks, same sand, same shit basically. And the fortress I'm yet to explore, but I really hope it's great. I like the assets they created these biomes with, but they're no, not different enough. It looks like they used the same rock models with different textures. Other than that, the game looks great, but you get tired after a few hours of playing it, so it's not easy on the eyes. Same thing happened to me when I was playing New World. Good character and weapon textures, really nothing much to add on this front. Hello. 
sound is mostly good, no idea about the soundtrack as I play with it off for copyright reasons, but I remember being good. Voice acted dialogues, which is a big plus, but too much of it. And it's no problem because the amount of dialogue lines, but it's cringy and the story is not very good anyway, so the fact that there is a lot of dialogue to listen becomes bad. Sometimes there is this bug where your sound is off, I don't know it's, it, if it's fixed, it didn't happen to me for the last day or so, so maybe devs hot fixed it in the meantime. Cinematics now. While I can say for certain the cinematics are cool and I appreciate them, I don't appreciate the large aperture used in all cameras. I think the lowest f-stop is 1.8 or something and I'm pretty sure the cinematic artist that was in charge of the cameras was using 1.8 or close to that in most of the shots making all background out of focus most of the time and changing focus from one subject to the other is cool and all but don't overdo it my guy please don't overdo it the focus don't doesn't need to be like this like this i can focus on who's talking on my own thank you so yeah this is my gripe with the cinematics on some of the characters even the focus distance is wrong placing them a tiny bit out of focus <laughs> Luna's focusing on sensing the beat generated from the Iron Heart, and she's also listening. Th this is a joke, by the way. It's, it's, it was clearly intended for that ass to be out of focus. So, yeah. Jokes aside, I feel the cinematics artist could have used small apertures in many of those cinematics. For who doesn't know, that includes more objects in focus in the foreground and background. It's as simple as that. Monetization in this game is pure AIDS. Note, I said. AIDS, not cancer. Meaning, you will get nickeled and dimed at every step of the way. One more than the first four gear presets, so you don't have a loadout for every ascendant you unlock. Pay. One more equipment slots. This goes to 1000, by the way. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> so, pay up. Want to increase the module capacity of your weapon and don't have the materials needed for them for the item? No worries, bro. <laughs> you can pay for it. One more than three loadout slots they give you for a weapon for some reason? <laughs> sure, pay up. These are just a few of the things you can spend money on, but the shop is where it's at. You have the usual bullshit pass, descendants, ultimate descendants, limited skins, premium skins, custom skins, makeups, custom cosmetic items, support materials, and convenience. <laughs> How convenient. Of course, everything you buy is a bit more than the premium currency bundles, because every other company is doing that, am I right? AIDS, I tell you. Most stuff is obtainable in game as far as I know. But rest assured, you'll farm that bunny ultimate skin for 100 hours. Or perhaps even more, I don't know. Or you can just buy the skin with money and save you a lot of time. Your choice, Piggy. Pay up or go to work. Are you ready to be? Let's be honest here, this skin just <laughs> sells itself, right? Oh, and you have Panda Bundle made uniforms. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, guys. And of course, a dinosaur set. Because why not have a party full of stupid looking people running around? Am I right? Whatever. Just don't buy anything ever if you're against this monetization model. But listen, I'm not telling you what to do with your money. You do as you please. I know I won't buy a single thing. Not even the convenience buffs because I hate being nickeled and dimed. As long as they don't come up with paid expansions like Bungie, Nexon's model is still better in my eyes. There is a scamminess threshold that I developed over the years of playing free-to-play live service games. If a company is asking for too much, I'll not buy anything. If I consider the prices to be okay, I usually get at least the boosts for 14 days or something, as I find it fair, to be honest. But being this aggressive with the monetization makes me actively refrain from buying anything just because I know some people will pay for every stupid little thing they put in the shop, making these guys millions. Remember, hit them in the wallet, boys. And last thing about this topic, everyone who buys expensive things in these games because they can, are actively making the games worse because these companies will keep getting greedier and the experience will degrade even more for everyone. Even you. Yeah, so, yeah.
Once one of them are, are making a breakthrough, everyone will start doing it. Local Destiny shaders, for example. Paints in this game are one use as well. Shocking, I know. These plain colors make the weapons look like ass anyway. Enough with this crap, let's move on, shall we? Monetization gets a 2 out of 10, and the 2 is only because I've seen worse. This is close to my limit at least, it might not be as close to your limit, but it is how I'd rate the monetization. Raina, Sharon, even the those bastards. They satisfy their own desires by taking... The story is pretty bad. As I said, the voices are cringy, in English at least. When this thing lost me, I started to skip the story bits, so I have no clue what's going on by the end. I mean, I know the important bits, but I have no clue how we got there. <laughs> 6 out of 10. Good effort, and the 6 points are there because the voice acted everything and have some cool cinematics to go along with it. Oh, my beloved daughter, Daya. Hold on a little longer. Your mom will save you no matter what. The menus are okay for the most part, but I get Destiny 2 vibes from the menus and that's not a positive, by the way. To get to my quests, journal, access info and map, I press M. To get to my inventory, customization, descendant, shops and bullshit pass and consumables, I press I. The good part about this is the fact that devs found a good way for us to track and grind materials, modules and consumables. The UI is okay, I mean you have all the needed info on the screen. I only wish something will tell me one of my mates is down and fighting a boss. But other than that, I really have no issues with the UI. So 7.5 out of 10. The performance is not stellar, but I wouldn't say it's that bad. With DLSS frame generation and my 4090, I get 100 to 150 FPS. That is with everything on Ultra in 1440p. There are some stutters happening from time to time. I couldn't figure out the, the cause, but it doesn't happen too often. So I'd say performance is 8 out of 10. The final score of the game is 7 out of 10. It's pretty sad to copy Warframe to this extent, but add so much friction to the game so it looks like a cash grab rather than a project devs intended to support and develop for a long time. When you really look into it and figure out how much time you need to sink into this game to get simple items, you'll know what's up, you know? They want you to buy things from the store and do everything in their power for you to cave in and swipe. I'll play this as I play any other free-to-play I find unreasonable in its monetization. I want to see how far I can get as a free-to-play. The moment I hit a tall wall in the progression, I'll just stop playing. Simple as that. Not that I hate the challenge, but I hate stupid challenges, you know? And the other sad thing is, in my eyes at least, not even that hard to beat Bungie at their own game. This being more predatory than even Destiny is saying something in my humble opinion. Final thoughts now, for real this time, th this game needs player trading like in Warframe and the prices in the shop must go down drastically. And perhaps the grind needs to get better overall. From what I see, even now it will be a pain, if I ever get there. And get rid of the stupid research and build limit, please, please for the love of god, it's so dumb. And it has no place in the game. Please get rid of it. I recommend this game as it's free and there is no, I don't know, no harm trying it, right? But beware, the in-game economy and shop is pure AIDS. Now, give this video some love if it confirmed your opinion and biases or if it was helpful in any way. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care and see ya. Descendant.